when when you were older and you had three sons, could you tell, right, from having been there, you were you were in the major leagues, could you tell that your son Bill had potential? Could you tell? I, I, I didn't want Bill to play football, he'll tell you that. You and your daddy were there when you signed your professional contract. Right. When your son Bill signed his contract, were you there? No. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't even know when it happened. I guess he signed when, when, when you went to Florida for spring training down there with the Cincinnati organization. Yep. Well, I signed with the Cubs in 80. I was in Michigan playing summer ball. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. I forgot And about then when I got released right. by them, I signed out of a tryout camp in Tampa, Florida. I know that. Um, yeah. Scotty Breeden signed me. So you, you, you weren't at your home. You weren't in no. your living You were no. trying to figure out I how was, to get I was, I was, went to an invitational trial camp. My college roommate got invited, and Larry Doty was the, the scout that headed up to... Sure. He was a scout with Cincinnati before he was the GM of, of Pittsburgh. And I called him up and asked if I could tag along with my, my roommate. And he said, sure, yeah, I remember you from college. You're pretty good college pitcher. Come on down. And I went down and ironically was the only guy to sign out of that tryout camp. So I was just a tag along that just got lucky. That stuck. Yeah. When he when Bill started to go through the minor leagues, just like any other player, and you go rookie and A ball, double A and triple A, you you got a father who pitched in the big leagues. Could you see or could you tell that he was getting better, you know, to earn going to a higher level to a higher level because one of the people that's watching is his father who was a major league pitcher. No, uh, you, you, when you say watching, uh, there's no watching, there's no TV, there was nothing that I could see. Ah, uh, okay. Visually, the only thing I could get was what you might read in the papers and Bill playing an A ball up in Connecticut somewhere. I mean, what's the connection there? I get it. So, I mean, this was all... I probably just something that he, he had a job, and I had a job. And his job eventually took him to the major leagues. Um, so. Well, Pete Rose told Bill in front of me that he had major league stuff. All he needed to do was pay attention and, and, and he could pitch in the major leagues. Uh, and Bill had the stuff. But I was amazed that he, that he threw as hard as he threw and that he could do what he did. You know, in, in this country, uh, lots have changed since the 1940s. That's the truth. But, but one thing that, that is very, very, there's just so few, father and son pitchers, father and son pitchers in the major leagues, it's just, it's a very rare thing. Well, I, I know that, and uh, I have a little very small item that I cut out of USA Today when Bill got to play Major League Ball, I, was a, I bought a newspaper because they had a more defined uh, statistics about the games and I could tell more about what went on. And one day I picked up the, the paper and read it and somehow or another that game I'm telling you about that I started, the first game I pitched in St. Louis, right. there was no, wasn't any, never heard of something being a save. <laughs> but somewhere back in, they went back and, and gave me credit for a save. And I can show you this little article that I got framed in there where yesterday the, these two guys cool. bro broke, broke Joe, uh, pitcher Bill Landrum and Joe Landrum's record of 59 saves. Yeah, we had no idea. I didn't know Didn't either. even know about it. Because it's a it's a father son combination of saints. Was it Pasqual? Yeah. Pasqual? Well, I told or... Bill, see, if I ain't got that saint, you wouldn't have your name in the place. Yeah, but yeah, we we we, he, we never knew that uh, that record existed until it was broken. I said, Dad, like, we never had a chance to, to enjoy it. It's too you know, funny. We had a father son record in the major leagues, and never knew it until. It was broken. And Barbon, then, Bar Pedro Barbon oh, and his uh, son. Pedro Barbon Jr. Jr. Yeah. When, when Jr. got his first Made save things. for Atlanta, right. that broke our father-son save record of 59, I think it was. Donna? 
What, what this frame says is uh, pretty interesting to me. It's the USA Today paper from 1995. And it's making reference to a father-son pitching combination. Pedro Brabone Sr. was well known as a pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. But then, many years later, his son came along. And it said that uh, Pedro Bourbon's comeback with the Reds provided uh, some interesting situations. His, his son, uh, Pedro Bourbon Jr., when, they, when he got a save, they broke an all-time baseball record for fathers and sons. And the all-time baseball record was held for saves was for Joe and Bill Landrum. But the interesting part about it is Bill and Joe Landrum didn't know that they held an all-time baseball record until it was broken. That's right, because I didn't know I had a save. Yeah, it wasn't, well, wasn't such a thing when I played. Well, yeah. you do know that you went in the game at St. Louis, and that ball went to Reese, to Robinson, to Hodges, and you got the job done. That's what you do know. Well, uh, if, if I'd had to throw another pitch, I don't know telling what would have happened. But I went on and had it. I pitched another two or three innings that day and, and uh, did, did well. Well, anywhere you pitched, you did well. No, no, that's not a fact. No? I've got people hurt bad. I, if I was ever in doubt, I'd pitch them inside and let them kill the first baseman or the third baseman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want none of that stuff coming back through the mouth. <laughs> Do you, a personal question, if you don't mind. Where do you think your, your funny sense of humor comes from? I don't have one. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not known as a comedian in this family by any stretch of imagination. Well, I'm allowed to have I my... I do enjoy certain things. The only thing is I haven't been around things I enjoy. <laughs> I personally have an opinion, and I think you're funny as can well, be. I, like I say, I, I can cut loose every now and then, but, and, and they ain't even had a beer. Norm Irvin. Yeah, that, that, that's close, but not quite. Anyway, he 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 was probably my first exposure to all this Cal California hot talking stuff with the the way they talk and the, what they say and the way they. But he was he was a good friend of mine, and and uh, I just thought the world of him. Um, not too long ago, so I couldn't be like him. Sure. Well, you're two different people from two different parts of the country. Well, in '49, when I was at Fort Worth, you got a the Wheatish people would would give you a a case of Wheatish for every home run that you hit, uh, or every ball game that you pitched and won. And we room with a great family out right across the street from one of the golf courses where they play this colonial tournament every year. And we room with these people, and they had a house with the old breezeway. It had the garage and then the breezeway between the house, and they converted the garage into a, a room, and that's where Dick and I stayed, and these, these were great, just great people. And uh, that's just, just, just where I got accustomed to being around him in 49. Sure. When, when we really didn't work for, for not from the same uh, growing up situation at all. I just thought, and I, we just dated uh, two Italian sisters all that summer. <laughs> we got you? pictures, I got yeah. pictures in my scrapbook of old 20, 24, 26 A model that, uh, that the man that owned, our, owned the house where we rented, he was an old Texas A&M man. And he, he used to let us use, and we used to drive that thing to the ballpark back and forth. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah what did you... What did you think when you heard not too long ago that Dick Williams made it to the Hall of Fame? I thought he deserved it. I really did. I mean, I never thought about it from playing days, but he, he Dick had some, some uh, what, four major league World Series? Going there with the Oakland A's in 72 and 73. Going there with the Boston Red Sox in 68. Yeah. Um, or 67, yeah, yeah. Uh, going with the San Diego Padres. So Dick Williams, to take to take a team as a manager to the World Series four well, different times. As you know, uh, the Yankees guy wanted him to manage up there. And I used, we, used, we corresponded 
every Christmas. I'd get cards from them for years until he until he died. And uh, Norma, his wife, and and I used to date her sister Jean. That all that all that summer. And uh, he, he he just what I don't know. Contact and talk so much, but I don't talk as much for the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. You, it did feel good that that you heard that Dick Williams made it to the oh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, I certainly did. I, 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 oh yeah, the Yankees wanted him to manage. In fact, I believe they signed him, and the and the league president negated it. You're correct. If, if I'm correct, you are correct. And I used to tell. And then they have a son. Who came up and he went? He's he's been in the baseball professionally from the office standpoint. Yeah. And uh, and I, I remember telling that, that I had always that I was a Dick Williams man, but I, but I wasn't a Yankee fan. I no. hope he didn't hope he didn't get the job. Up.